Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very fun edition of The Real Estate Show here on CJD. Terry needs a little oil for his microphone. Yeah, did you hear that? I heard that. Everyone heard that. <laughs> That's Terry Galakos, president of Northeast Mortgages and chartered mortgage broker. Myself, Chantal Desjardins. Did you have trouble getting in this morning? Every road in the city is either under construction. No, because I was smart. I dropped off the kids at my parents' house last night. Okay, smart. Okay. I like it. Then drove in early. Yeah. Went for breakfast on Crescent. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Then just Sherbrooke, boom, boom down boom. Papineau, Ontario, right here. Wow. Yeah. Because the bikes outside the radio station, they just keep going. I like, know. It's, it's like a never ending It's like a never ending race. Of, yeah. Great. Love it's the, the city. It's the never ending race. Love the city. <laughs> we are live every Sunday here on CJD from 1 to 2 p.m. You can watch us on Facebook Live. Head over to Facebook. Type in Terry Kalakos, K I L A K O S. And uh, watch the magic live as it happens every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a call with any of your real estate questions, 514-790-0800, or text us at 514-800. And today on the show, uh, last week it was so popular talking about tips to uh, increase the value of your home that I think we got through what, like, like one question, one question yeah. Yeah. and people were texting in yeah. and calling in. Good and times. so we're going to do part two That's right. uh, today on the show because there's some fun things you can do. Some that cost money, but some that don't cost a lot of money, and it jacks up the price of your house if you want to sell right. it. That's right. Absolutely. Especially if you're living right in the middle of this bike race right now and you want to sell your house and... Maybe it's just me. I'd love to. I'd love to do a showing in the middle of the bike race. That'd be good. Maybe not. Is uh, there anything weird that happens? In no, this no, 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 yeah, nothing. Traffic What's up with all is these... great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look. You know what? This week has been a little bit uh, of a nutty week. Uh, there's been a couple of things in the news. Uh, so I guess we can start with that, and then we can kind of jump into the uh, the topic of hand at hand. And uh, at one thirty after the uh, the news. We'll just have uh, Rebecca Perez. Uh, she's going to be on for a couple of minutes. She's actually launched a new magazine, which uh, yours truly is uh, featured inside of. Uh, I did see pictures of you yeah, guys yeah, in Marav, yeah. Me right? and Marav, yeah. So we're uh, we're featured uh, as the power couple in there. So, yeah. Uh, that should be fun. Cool. So she'll join us after 1.30. Yeah. So she's going to join us uh, after 1.30 just to uh, to kind of talk about that. It's called Goss Magazine, and it first episode uh, first issue not episode first issue is uh, going to be launched i believe uh, this wednesday right marov yeah and uh, yeah so that should and you, be you'll uh, have fun. like a link on your web on your facebook maybe that people can go see it absolutely yeah for sure. definitely all right definitely. let's start with the market update so market update the banks have been caught with their hands in the cookie jar uh oh so um we've talked about this time and time and time again on this show how you know when you choose to go with the big banks Get ready to pay massive penalties when you break that mortgage. This is something that, you know, has been kind of like the cornerstone of the education that we give uh, at Northeast. It's something that we talk about on this show all the time. You use one of the big five, get ready. You're paying a penalty when you break that And the reason people mortgage. are using one of the big five is just, just that's what they think of first, right? If you're exactly. Not, if you don't think of using a mortgage broker, you would go to a bank. Exactly, exactly, so and then you're people. you're you're kind of stuck with with yep. them. So uh, this week uh, there was a class action lawsuit that was filed against uh, all the Canadian banks. Uh, it was a Montreal uh, company that uh, uh, law firm that actually launched it. So uh, it remains to be seen because what's going to happen with that, and if they are actually found guilty and they have to, um, you know, this is going to be big. It's going to be huge. And this is not the first of its kind. There was actually another class action lawsuit uh, that was they had tried to file a couple of years ago against uh, one particular bank. It uh, didn't go anywhere. Uh, right now, uh, we're going to see what's going to happen in Quebec because Quebec is actually different than the rest of Canada. Uh, we operate under the civil code here, whereas the rest of Canada operates under the common law system. So uh, these uh, lawyers might actually have... Uh, uh, something to stand on. But because. guilty of what? Guilty of making people pay big fines? Yeah, because whenever you break a mortgage, there's always two types of penalties you can pay. You could pay what's called an interest rate differential penalty, or you can pay three months of interest. Now, if you ask majority of people and you say to them, what's the penalty that you pay when you break your mortgage? They're going to say three months of interest. That's mm -hmm. it. That's all. That's not the case. The majority of the banks are actually charging the higher of the two, and it's the IRD. And the IRD is basically the difference uh, between the rate that you have and the rate that they can put out their money at right now, plus the discount that they gave you off of the posted rate when you got that mortgage. And this is something that we talked about time and time again. When you walk into 
Bank ABC, uh, and they tell you, you know what, our posted rate is 5.34, but we're going to give it to you at 3.2 or 3.3. That discount that they just gave you, yeah. if you break that mortgage, they want that money. Oh, sneaky. Yeah. And uh, so these are all kind of the penalties. Nobody walks into a bank and pays 5.34. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, but yet they still kind of are using that as a way to calculate penalties, which is completely, completely, as far as I'm con concerned, criminal. Mm -hmm. And I truly... I, I hope that it works out for this uh, law firm that actually filed these uh, this class action lawsuit because it's going to be an amazing thing. Uh, the other thing uh, this week, the Bank of Canada did meet and um, they didn't raise the overnight rate as we suspected. Uh, we kind of talked about this also last week where we said, you know, I didn't believe that they were going to be raising the overnight rate. They did not raise it. They did warn, however, that come July, there's a very good chance that they might be raising it by another quarter. We're expecting another increase at some point this year, uh, whether it's going to happen in the summer months or whether it's going to happen towards the end of the year, it remains to be seen. Um, the indicators to me are kind of telling me that there's not going to be an increase, um, although inflation at all, at all okay, uh, although interest rates... Um, are still low, what's happening is uh, the Canadian dollar has actually gained a little bit of strength. Plus, we have, um, we actually have the um, inflation is going up, but it's actually going up kind of artificially. It's driven, being driven up by oil prices and stuff like that. So if we remove oil out of the equation, if we remove gas out of the equation, uh, inflation is actually pretty low. So uh, we'll see what happens in July uh, as we get closer to that. Hmm. And uh should be uh, should be fun to see. Yeah. Cool. And uh, that's uh, that's about it. There's uh, nothing uh, much more that happened this week, but uh, we'll see next week what's yeah. uh, what's going on. You never know. Yeah, you never exactly. know what's going to happen from week to week. <laughs> that's why you got to tune in to the real estate that's show right. here on CJD with Terry Kalakos. Uh, call us 514-790-0800. Text us 514-800 with any of your real estate questions. Last week was a doozy on how to increase the value of your home, so let's jump back in. Now, some of the, the ones that are kind of uh, easy to think about are the, the main renovations you should do, kitchen and bathroom. So we touched on that last yeah. week, right? Yeah, so what's going to actually raise the value of the house versus what's going to support the value of the house, right? So a right. lot of times people... They come to us and they're like, you know what? I just redid my roof. Uh, does that actually increase the value of my house? Yes and no. It supports the value of your house, but will it actually increase the value of your house? Not necessarily, right? So if your house was supposed to sell for $300,000 and you haven't done your roof, chances are it's going to sell for $290,000, right? Because the people that are going to be buying it, they're going to factor that in. They're going to say, you know what, I have to redo my roof. Mm -hmm. I have to redo the roof. So because I have to redo the roof, you know. Um, so that's an example of how the value would be supported. So if the roof is done, it will sell for whatever it's supposed to sell for. Right. So those are the type of renovations that will support the value. Changing your hot water tank is not going to increase the value, but it will support it. Um, you know, uh, oil tanks is the same thing. It's not going to increase the value. It's going to support it air conditioning systems, all those kinds of things that are supposed to be there yeah. are not going to necessarily increase the value. They're just going to support the value. However, you go in, you modernize a bathroom, you modernize a kitchen, uh, maybe the floors, some paint, stuff like that. Now, these are things that can actually increase the value of the house. Right. We'll go more into it after traffic, but it's, uh, it's going to be... Uh, Interesting show. It sure yeah. will. <laughs> Sitting on the edge of my seat right now. I'm sure Kira Yeager. Oh, we have even a call that's coming up after traffic. For now, uh, let's check in with Kira Yeager on the roads. Kira. Hey, guys. All right. So let's uh, talk about the Champlain outbound. It's gotten very difficult on the outbound Champlain because of road work. There's a closure at the 132. I broke it. And it's about Again. It's broken. It's broken. No. See? Is it the same button you break it's every same. time? button that pops off. Right, let's just take a little filmy of that because I wouldn't mind posting the fact that Terry breaks something. Okay, guys. So Terry uh, broke a piece yet again on the, I don't even know what it's on. It's from the, uh, it's, it's from the uh, on, uh -huh. on air, off air. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Broke it again. Broke it again. <laughs> yeah. Class action suit question from Kevin and Lavelle. Let's do it. You had a third update, no? 
Uh, yeah, but I didn't really want to go into the third update. What was the third Why? update? The third update, it's, uh, it's been a big, no, that's, uh, yeah, for the Canadian economy, here's a housing market played a role, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you it's, a, like it's opinion. It's too big. It's not, too no, big. it's not that it's too big, it's just an opinion. Okay. And uh, I don't really actually... Yeah, it's like this stupid update. article that came out. And they repeated it throughout like multiple medias, okay. mediums, uh, basically saying more than 50% of mortgages will be renewing this year. And this is how it's affecting them. And it's like 50%. 50%? It's like, what are you saying? Like in 2013, everybody got mortgages yeah. and now they're at the five year mark? Like, like that seems stupidity. weird. Yeah. So you think it's just wrong? Of course it it's wrong. Completely wrong. Of course it's wrong. How do you just put out a wrong article? And, uh, oh, there's a ton of... You cannot, you cannot, unless these people went and scoured the registers to find out when... You can't, Even you can't at that, say that. It doesn't give you an accurate thing yeah. like that. Yeah. It's like literally impossible. Maybe there's a specific bank that had that number, but right. it's not... You huh? can't go across freaking like 30 different lenders and... Yeah. And get that data. And Such get that data. False yeah, data. exactly. It's just fake news. Yeah. Fake, fake news. news. Fake news. Fake news. So I was at a restaurant in Old Montreal uh, last night, two nights ago. And oh, there were, were these. Were. Yeah. And there, were, uh, there was a four uh, American tourists. Uh, and they were talking about the fake news. And they were very passionate about it. And very, very loud. So I didn't want to eavesdrop. In, a, in agreement with uh, Mr. Trump? Yeah. Well, oh. big, big. Big supporters. Big supporters. Most Americans are actually supporters Big. of Trump. And I, I didn't mind. Well, it's just, why do you have to be so like, loud in a restaurant? Like, most of us are talking at, like, an average, le like, a level where it's just we can hear each other's speak. Nice. But then indoor the, voice. the indoor voice. But then all we could hear was these loud people talking about making America great again. So loud. Well, we let's make mortgages great yeah, again. Yeah, let's make, make mortgages great. <laughs> No, but honestly, it's not about Trump. There's a lot of fake news out there on there is a lot of fake social news. media. Yeah. It's easy. The amount of times Sylvester Stallone died, and I'm like, what? Yeah. And How then many I times look it up. Fake. Seen... Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm alive. I'm very much alive. <laughs> it's so weird. Um. Yeah. Agreed. Strange. Scary. I don't know very if we waste our time. Hey, I just saw that somebody. Uh, a tour de Lille cyclist uh, had a heart attack. Yeah, did you see it? Did no, you see you that? Saw that? Are they okay? I just saw it. Well, usually when you have a heart attack, you're not okay. But you're not okay. I wouldn't say. No, but he's, I mean, uh, I don't know. I wanted to ask. Him. Not sure. Oh, I hope, oh, I hope they got him out of all that yeah. traffic mess. Yeah. Wow. I just want to know how are there still people cycling at this like? There's like thousands and thousands. Thousands of cyclists. Cyclists. Cyclers. 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 <laughs> These cyclers. They're sure. They sure are everywhere. Hey, don't make fun of me. They sure are. These cyclers. These cyclers. cyclers. Cyclists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yes, summer is coming. I'm so tired of the routine. Yeah. Waking up early, good. preparing the lunch, waking up the kids, blah, blah, blah. I get it. Oh. Sorry, guys, I'm gonna let we you do a show. Back. You ready? No. Is this a fake here or is this no, a real? It's real. No, it's real. No, it's real. Yeah, it is. Welcome back. Real Estate Show featuring Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages, chartered mortgage broker, myself, Chantal Desjardins. Uh, give us a call, 514-790-0800. Text us, 514-800. Now, we're talking about how to increase the value of your home. Uh, we we're talking about the kitchen. We we're talking about the bathroom. We we're talking about floors. Now, floors, it's always better to put in... Parquetry, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> you know what? I hate parquet floors no, no, so, too. so much. Yeah. Like, well, that would be a deal breaker for me when I see a house that okay, has parquet floors. Okay, so there floors. you go. So you just, you just brought up a good point. I'd rather have cheap, cheap, cheap floating floors or whatever it's called yeah. than parquetry. parquet. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't even I, know it was I, called parquetry. I... Parquetry. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Yeah. And um, honestly, it's one of these things that um, people still put it in. Uh, I have seen houses that no. just get renovated and they'll put it in. Or what they're going to do is they're going to basically go in, sand and varnish the parquetry floor and, you know, spend the money on sanding and varnishing and, and fixing it up. Instead when they of can just changing it. Changing it. So, I mean, again, renovations are one of these things where it, Different people like different things, you right. know, 
and it depends on whether or not you want to sell your house or if you want to keep it, right? So if you're, you want to do renovations, you know, we were talking about this last week and I was kind of making fun of you because you want a teal kitchen, right? <laughs> I just thought, saw it With at Ikea and I thought it was kind of fun you have right now. to have this whole teal thing. But then I, you know, snapped out of it where I was like, wait, am I really going to want a teal kitchen in five years from now? No. Exactly. And so, that's a bad idea. But let's say teal was your thing, right? And you really <laughs> like teal. Is that, that's teal, right? It's your teal. Water, it's a teal go. water bottle. So he's got a, she's got a teal water bottle, everyone. Anyways, okay. So, <laughs> so let's say you really wanted to have a teal kitchen. Well, that's fine if you want to live in that house and you want to have a, your teal your kitchen. Stuff, your the way stuff. you did it. The problem is, is that a lot of times people will live in a house uh, for X amount of years, not renovate it, and then decide, well, you know what? It's time that we move. We want to when we want to renovate before we move so we get top dollar you go and you put in a teal kitchen you've just basically eliminated a good chunk of your buyers exactly. because the amount of people that are going to actually be into that teal kitchen um, are less than right. what it would be if it was like a regular kitchen yeah. right so, so unless you know you're going to stay in that house for an extended period of time yeah exactly do kind of basic renos that are like appeal to the masses that's it exactly and the thing is is that Again, you got to kind of look at it and say, you know, I have clients, they come in to, you know, refinance a property so that they can get money out so that they can do renovations. Mm -hmm. And I've had people come in and be like, I need $60,000. And I'm like, okay, what's the money going to be used for? We want to re, uh, we want to renovate the house because we want to sell it next year. And I'm like, what are you going to do for six? Well, we're going to do the kitchen. We're going to do the bathrooms. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I'm like, okay, well, why don't you get a real estate agent to come in right now? and find out how much your house is worth based on the value, uh, based on how it is currently. Right. And then you can decide whether or not doing those renovations is actually worth it. Because a lot of times people think that just because they're gonna dump in $50,000, now all of a sudden the house is worth 100 right. or $150,000 more, and it's not necessarily the case, right? So you gotta look at all these different variables. I mean, you know, I'm not in the habit of telling people, you know, don't do something when they come in for a mortgage, but we also have to look out for, you know, kind of clients' interests and making sure that, you know, they're not kind of doing something based on the advice that they saw on HGTV, for example. Right. But right. when would it ever be a bad idea to, you know, dump in 50 grand for your kitchen and bathroom? You think it would only ever up the okay, sale so, price? Okay, so let's say, so let's say you have a house, 1950s, 1960s, right. and you know, you're, it's in desperate need of renovations, the kitchen and the bathroom, and you know that you're going to be dumping forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 into it. But if you don't dump that forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, you're just going to be spend, you're, you're going to sell it for $40,000 less than what you, right? Right. Th than what you could have sold it yep. had you done those renovations. So these are the, the types of things that you got to do. And this is where a good real estate broker would help out because when you get in that real estate broker, you need them to do compare uh, a comparative market analysis. And you got to look at it and say, look, what's my house value currently as is bathrooms, the way they are kitchens, the way they are. Uh, what do I need to do to support the value of what the house is currently? Right. You don't want to go crazy because don't forget, you're not, you're not going to actually be keeping that house. Mm -hmm. And what I have found is once people finish their renovations, they're like, you know what? We don't want to move. We like our house now. We just spent all this money. <laughs> so you got to just make sure that you know what you're doing and that you it makes sense because otherwise you're just going to be spending money and you're going to be incurring expenses that you didn't necessarily need to incur. Right. Exactly. Right. Uh, what are some of the little things that you could do that aren't necessarily cost you but can jack up the value? So something as simple as painting the house. Right. So, uh, you know, make it kind of more neutral as opposed to having, you know, like black, a bright and, red. Yeah, exactly. You know, red is nice for some, you know, some rooms. You know, I have a red. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Moving right is, along. Is going to throw a ball at me any second now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I uh, I don't mind red, but others might right. mind red. Right. So, um, again, you want to go neutral. You don't want to overwhelm people when they're coming to actually visit a property that you're selling. You want to make sure that um, it's neutral and it's going to be at the taste of everyone. And you want to make sure that if people don't like the colors, that when they walk in, they're like, okay, well, it wouldn't be so hard for us to change this, mm -hmm. right? So if you have a black wall, the people that are coming in, they're going to look at it and they're going to go, oh my God, 
I have to put, you know, three, 10 coats yeah, of paint exactly. on that just That's to get it. it back to white. Three coats of primer, three coats of paint just to get it like, you know, looking decent again yeah. before we can actually paint it. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, the other thing, something that people forget about all the time, light switches. What about light switches? So light switches are one of those things that kind of, it's, you know, devils in the details, mm -hmm. right? So think of it like this. You have like the old school light switches, right. you know, like the ones that have that little toggle that kind of sticks out. Or you have like more of the flat, more modern light switches. Right. A lot of the older houses have the old school. The toggle. The toggle. Changing your light switches and your plugs is one of these things that doesn't necessarily increase the value of your house, but it will actually support the value a little bit and it'll actually make people feel better. Because when someone walks into a house and they see the older light switches, they're kind of like, eh. And yeah. these are all things that people have told me over the years, right? So, oh, I went into this house. I have to change all the light switches. I got to do this. I got to do that. And you're like, light switches are the easiest thing to change. but Absolutely. It's just, yeah. 100%. You know, um, making sure that you don't have burnt lights in the house. Mm. Sounds simple. Simple. Okay. But burnt light bulbs are a huge kind of thing that where people kind of look at it and go, what's going on here? Right. So I'll give you an example. When me and my wife bought our place in Dollard a couple of years ago, um, we would drive by because, you know, once you put an offer on a house, you tend to stock the previous, you know, the previous owners. Anyway, so we would drive by and the house was completely black because the previous owners had lights uh, lights that were actually burnt. Anyways, right. we'll talk about it after the break. We will talk yeah. about it after the break and so much more on how to increase the value of your home here on The Real Estate Show on CJD. Call us 514-790-0800. Text us 514-800. More coming up after this. The Real Estate Show is brought to you by Northeast Mortgages. Make the most of your closet space at Closets by Design. Chantal can always paint when the time is right. Love tea. He, he, he. Uh, That's Deanne L. Doby. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but thank you. Um, did you really take a ventriloquist? Yes. Yeah. I feel like it's a strange thing to have taken. Yeah. I was in drama. I know, I get it, but no, do you want to make my like, uh, teacup talk like a puppet? He's a strange guy. So, uh, and now, uh, next on the stage, <laughs> Terry <laughs> and his puppet... Barry! <laughs> oh, wait. You gotta go and hold on and let me get that. Terry and his puppet, Terry. Terry. Hello. Nice to meet you, Chantal. Terry, move a little. <laughs> Do it so we can't see you. See yeah, you. Sit so down. Nice to meet you, Chantal. Oh, hold on. It really is a pleasure. What's going on, Barry? How are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no. How long was this course? Was it like a one day course or? It was like one hour. <laughs> <laughs> was it really an hour long course? Wow. Yeah. I'm not playing with your water bottle. No, I liked I it. Know. I thought it was really good. I think people at home really liked it. Yeah, I don't know where mm. that water bottle is. It's definitely playing, like, so. I get it. Well, I get it. I get it. What's that? Uh, so I would oh be a ventriloquist if I had hey, to. Guys, guys, stick to your day jobs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just never known somebody that's um, taken a ventriloquist. Like, when were you in drama? In high school? High school. Yeah, yeah. that's why he's so dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't drama. yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I loved yeah. it. I loved it. Good, them. good. But then you decided not to be a Hollywood star? I haven't decided that yet. <laughs> it might just happen one day. Well, Luciana Papilla is giving you a wave. Hey, hey. You know what I did to him? I found some pie wraps downstairs. Yep. So I ended up pie wrapping the door of no, the, uh, the newsroom. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, yeah I did. And then uh, when he opened the door, he's like, Kilakos! Yeah! <laughs> this has to be Kilakos! And you know what the problem is? He, she, he was, she, I can't he, speak. He, what he, the he, hell? She, she, she. He told Marav, you know, my condolences, which means I'm dead now. Oh! No, he means like he feels bad for yeah. me. No, that's what it means. Yeah. yeah, that's what it means. We're about to get Only He's about to get X. Um, yeah. oh, so we'll get. Uh, I can't believe how fast the show is going. How's it one thirty already? You need to slow you're, down. Uh, you're not spending too much time on the phone, anyways. Just a quick, 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 quick hello, quickie. Talk about the magazine. Yeah, we'll uh, 
So do, what, does he have her on the line now, or is he will in the next couple minutes? Well, she was supposed to come in, and uh, when we saw the craziness out there, we said, forget it. It's better you just call in. Yeah. Bluma Lupo. Didn't you say there was a caller? We dro yeah, but he, got dropped. Yeah, but he dropped them. He dropped them by the time we came back from... Uh, yeah, it was too long. They get impatient sometimes. They get impatient. Well, we have traffic. We have to go to traffic. Well, you know, I wouldn't want to wait 10 minutes either. I get it. He looks so summery today. I'm glad that uh, you decided to uh, find some more dresses to wear. <laughs> Listen, it's because I'm doing renos and all my dresses are in boxes. Right. Mm -hmm. I open my phone for a reason and I don't know why I, I remember. It's too just tough. So you're going to Mexico? Going to Mexico. Um, going to Mexico. And then... Wow, these phones are making us all brain dead. Oh, look at this. <laughs> yeah. Ask Ken Connors. What is that about? Look at this thing. Do not touch it. I'm fixing it. What is that? Like, on one hand, I love that the city does all these races. And it's like, you know, it's fun for people if you're like... From the into exactly. Day, sunny this afternoon, gusty <laughs> but rain, for those of us that just want to drive from <laughs> point A to point B, <laughs> nobody heard that. <laughs> nobody heard it. Nobody heard Terry it. mumbling. Terry <laughs> mumbling. <laughs> oh, we should tell people. Okay, here. who? Yeah, I'm just curious. Okay. Who watching right now is a fan of the bike race that is going Nobody. on? Nobody! Right like, no. who actually likes the bike race? Cyclists! Or cyclers! Cyclers! <laughs> I'm just curious. Who is enjoying the bike race today? Are we going to get um, Rebecca on the line? Today? Uh, not me! Well, they're obviously on their bike. They're not going to text you. They're going to text while cycle. <laughs> All that you're saying, Terry, is so very true. <laughs> All the rentals that I did in my former house is what helped to sell the house. I kept sure. in mind a resale value if I were to sell the house, and it That's worked. That's the fake scene. Like listening to your show, what? however I can. You, you and your North team East. there at CJD have a great day. Thank you, Carmela. Rita. Olympia just said, ah, for the bike race. Ah, oh, the bike race is the bane of my existence. So we had, mm. the first year that they did the Tour de Nuit, yeah. we were stuck. We had gone to my in-laws for, for dinner on a Friday night. And we weren't night. aware of the Tour de Nuit, even though we lived in the Tour de Nuit area. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So what did it mean? How long were you stuck and where were you stuck? So I'm coming, to, and it was just like all of a sudden, it was just at a standstill, everything. Code St. Catherine. No movement whatsoever. Yeah. Literally sitting for in our car for one hour. No! So oh, like, same spot. Yeah, so after an hour, I was like... Tell me now. Okay. I did like some sort of weird U-turn, and I ended up driving down one-way streets, alleyways, made it home, but... Uh, yeah, had so we not done that, we would still be sitting in that still, right now. Still, like ten now. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's 10 years later, but we would still we be would there. We would still be sitting there. We were having <laughs> this conversation. Just with. today, we were saying, we would still be sitting there. He's like, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, jeez, go do your cycling somewhere else. <laughs> but we, have, but we have a whole freaking island right I know. here that's actually Put dedicated on the island. to <laughs> We're such sour pussies. We're such sour pussies. Let's enjoy the summer and Let's the cycling. No, no cycling. I used to ride a bike. When Did I was you last six. time? Yeah, I was gonna say last time I was on a bike was with a banana seat and like streamers and a trading card and the yeah, like me spokes. Too. I go. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> me too. Hey, Deanne said that we are the fantastic team. Ah, thanks. Fantastic. Oh, did you switch back to uh, to us? To who us? Did you switch the mic? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Is it live? Yeah. Because someone just said I can only hear the news. Uh oh! No. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! No! Oh, we can hear. Yeah. Can you hear us? We can hear. Okay. Otherwise,
Otherwise, how would people know we're so fantastic? Well, and we that's because fantastic. they're they're listening to it on the radio, not on okay, Facebook. Okay, so Rebs is on. Uh, she's on line twelve. Okay. I don't think she likes you calling her Rebs. Maybe it's yeah, good like her, her, her Rebecca. Becky? Rebba Dabba. Rebecca Becky? is her name. Can Bex? I call her Becky? Uh, Bex is a good no. one. What that's like the just, beer. What about just Rebecca? You know what we should do, actually? Goss. Goss magazine. What's yeah. This? Magazine. Watch what I'm Oh, do. we gotta do a thing. You know, like when you have. Uh, Ready? Here we go. Rebecca Perez. You know when. When. Welcome back to the Real Estate Show on CJD with Terry Kalakos, president of Northeast Mortgages and Chartered Mortgage Broker. Are you doing well? <laughs> yeah. Good. What are you doing with the computer over there? You already broke a button. So we have Rebecca on, right? So yeah. she's she's going to be on. So you know when you have someone on mm-hmm. TV, but you have like just a picture of them because they're on the phone. Go they're on. They're not actually in studio. So I have a picture of her here. So that's... Terry, the tech guy. Terry, the See? tech guy. You... Uh, let's go to the phone. <laughs> Rebecca Perez is hey. uh, on the line. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Delusional. Rebecca. We're absolutely delusional. <laughs> totally okay. Uh, so tell us about the magazine and uh, tell us about the inaugural edition and Terry and Marav being on it. Yes, very exciting. So it's actually our, our launch event happening this Wednesday at the W Hotel. And it's our first issue, a business-oriented magazine for women and entrepreneurs in Montreal. We did uh, feature the power couple, Terry and Marav, <laughs> from Northeast Mortgages because they are the best in the game. And we have a lot of other experts and leaders in different fields, uh, going from medicine to real estate. So we're very excited for that. Very, very cool. Um, where do people uh, get a copy of the magazine? If uh... so, it's going to be at the event, and we're also going to have them on newsstand in two weeks. Sweet. So in Multimax, Chapters, Indigo, every store. Awesome. And how can people find out more information? They can go on GodsClub.com, and if you'd like to come to the inaugural event, it's going to be on Facebook. Great. Under Goss Magazine launch. Sounds good. Hopefully the bike race outside will be done by then. Yeah. And, uh, I hope so. <laughs> we'll make it down. Are, are you loving the bike race? I really am. I live in Newport, so it's exciting. Oh, my oh. God. Okay. Well, that <laughs> makes one of us. Makes one of us. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much, Terry. Thanks, Chantal. Bye. Bye. Good Bye. <laughs> okay, how to increase the value of your home. Let's talk about uh, the things. Well, I guess a little bit more about the, the small things that you can do that don't cost a lot, like... Uh, smelling nice. Yeah. I out here, smelling nice. Okay, so um, I'll give you an example of once when I was actually looking to refinance one of my properties, and um, I, you know, the bank approves the file, it's all good, and they say we're going to send an appraiser in to come and value the property, and I was like, okay, no problem. So they send it in, and I end up. Uh, getting a, a call after the appraisal was done a few days and the bank comes back and they're like, yeah, we're not, we're not lending. What? And I'm like, what do you mean you're not lending? And they're like, yeah, we can't, uh, we can't lend. Uh, the value is not supported on the property. I'm like, what are you talking exactly. about? So I called the evaluator. He's like, yeah, you know, uh, this one unit was really dirty and it smelled like dogs and cats and all kinds oh. of stuff. And I was like, okay. I was like, you know what? Hang on one second. Let me take care of that. So I went in. You febrezed it. Literally. Really? <laughs> literally. Yeah. I literally went in. I told the tenant, I was like, listen, man, like, you got to go. Like, honestly, like, you need to be out of your apartment when the, the guy yeah. comes back with your dogs and your cats. Figure out where you're going. And I went in, febrezed the place, make sure that had the guy clean it, cleaned all the windows and everything. Came back. Deal was done. Wow. Like, yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was as simple as that because... Smell is one of those things that it can make or break a transaction, right? right? So when you're a heavy smoker, you don't realize that your house doesn't reeks like an ashtray, yeah, doesn't smell good. You have three, four, five dogs or cats in the house. Your house is going to smell like your animals, even though you think that it doesn't smell like your animals. Or even it I actually find does. Uh, when you go visit like grandma's house and it smells just kind of like mothballs yeah. or like you, you walk in, you're like, oh, it just smells dusty and like Yeah, old. yeah absolutely. But so you can like yeah, liven it up a little. That's it. You got to open the windows, make sure you're airing out the place and you got to make sure that you actually put in some little, you know, air fresheners and, yeah. and stuff like that. And for all the people that are listening right now that are going to 
send me emails this week telling me that uh, you know, using air fresheners causes cancer. <laughs> okay, which I know I'm gonna get. Obviously. <laughs> okay. Um, you have a choice. You can either, you know, kind of <laughs> suck it up and and deal with the smell for a couple of hours, uh, or you, right? You know, you just lower the value of your house. Yeah, it's, it's up to you. I get it. Um, so it's very very important. You know, smell is one of those things that's very simple to to kind of fix. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't do it, it can actually drastically decrease the value of your house. And I've actually had clients where their house wasn't selling just because they were heavy smokers. Um, their windows were covered in uh, like a layer of Disgusting. nicotine. Yeah. So to them, there was nothing. There was nothing wrong with their place, right? And their house was actually very neat. They were very neat people, but it had a layer of nicotine right. in the windows, right? So you would walk in the house and all of a sudden it would be nice and sunny outside. You walk in and it's yellow, the house. Yeah. And it's one of those things that you don't kind of realize it, but it's there and, and you, now have they to, will. you have to, you have to clean it and, you know, hire someone, pay him, I don't know, a couple of hundred bucks and uh, have him clean all your windows or something yeah. or do it yourself. Uh, now, so. is there a cheap way to do the lens, like do something with the outside, the landscaping to make it kind of like a little bit of extra pep without spending a ton of money? Okay, so let's uh, let let's go back to me and my wife, right? <laughs> Again, little simple things, right? So we buy our place. The previous homeowners, right? We were talking about the light bulbs. None of the lights outside of the house worked. So when I got there, so when we were stalking them, we were like, "How come they don't put on any of the ox accent lights mm -hmm. outside?" And uh, we later found out that every single light bulb outside of the house was burnt. So instead of them actually replacing replacing them, they just kept the lights off. And I was actually convinced that there was a problem with the electrical because I would try and turn on the lights. So I'm, I'm, I'm pressing the light switches and nothing's happening. So I said, okay, before I go crazy, like trying to like rip apart walls to find out what's going on with the electrical, let me see if it's actually burnt out. And sure enough, the lights were actually burnt. And I was like, this is idiotic. So changing the light bulbs again, supports the value of your house. Right. Uh, because I can tell you, we actually offered them less just because of the fact that- Funny. Yeah. Four light bulbs yeah. would be worth, you know, it was 10 bucks. It was six, but okay. yeah. <laughs> but yes, exactly. But you know, you get a yeah. crazy better deal because these people didn't want to change six light bulbs. Now, the other thing, uh, same example, for one reason or another, they decided that they weren't going to take care of the lawn outside. So it was like literally like a, a it was just weeds everywhere. It was just like a sea of weeds in the front yard. Uh, the, they hadn't turned on the sprinkler system. So it was like weeds and like burnt grass, mm -hmm. you know, cause the, and it, it was, it was terrible. So we came in and like literally in a weekend, turned on the sprinklers, sprinkled down some grass seed, you know, put some herbicides in and stuff like that. And before you know it, like after a week or two, we had a lawn again. Yeah. And these are the things that people don't realize. And it's not something that costs a lot of money, but it is something that's important that you need to do and you have to maintain because otherwise the person that's coming in is not going to be interested in, you know, they're, they're, they're going to say, look, we have to redo the landscaping. We got to do this. People are not as creative as you think they are, right? right? So people, sometimes they lack vision when they're coming to visit your house. And they're also looking for excuses to not pay full price. So don't give them the excuses. Right. You don't want someone coming in and saying, oh, I got to redo everything out here because it's all dead. And it's, you know, it's you know, I have dandelions instead of flowers, you know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And there's some things that you can do on the cheap and there's some things that you can do. You have to kind of put in the extra money and we'll get into stuff like that, like granite countertops versus, uh, you know, the cheap stuff that comes with the place. When is it in your best interest to actually put in the extra and when uh, can you kind of skimp out on the details? We'll come up with that coming up in just a minute here on The Real Estate Show with Terry Galakos. But right now, let's take a look at the roads with Kerry Egger. The roads are not necessary. Squeaky, squeaky, Terry. Is it your mic or your seat that's squeaking? It's the, uh, uh, we mic. need to bring some WD-40 for next well, time. I feel like they should have some. Like, it's not, it's not like... Mm. Oh, this, you are going to just... Do, 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 do. You know what What else made our house not sell to previous buyers? What? Bad pictures. Pictures on the wall? Oh, that's No, bad pictures one. online. Oh, yeah. Realistic. 
So there's uh, there's um, boil cinnamon and apple etc on the stove equals frugal. Yeah, it's true. Boil cinnamon on the stove to make it smell yeah. nice when people come in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they say bake an apple pie right before your visit. And it smells like home. Oh, that's fun. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a really good one. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah, that's a really good one. No, but seriously though, you walk into a home and the smell hits you and it's not, you sort of, you don't even apple pie see anymore. No, no, like a bad smell. Yeah. You don't even see anymore. All you do is smell and you just want to, it creates such a bad emotion in us, a bad smell. Yeah. Whereas something like an apple pie. Yeah. It you feels would just like, like oh. you feel nice and cozy. Oh. Yeah. Hey, did I get a ticket outside? Why would you get a ticket? Because I didn't uh, put any money in the meter. Why didn't you put any money in the meter? Because I figured the green onions can't pass. Nobody calls them the green onions. No one calls them the green onions. What do they call them? They're, they don't wear the green clothes anymore since like 1985. What are they called? Just meter they maids, them? no? Meter onions? Maids? They're not meter maids? That's in the know. States. They're not called meter tax maids. Collector, tax collectors? No, what are they called? Okay, what are the uh, green onions called now, guys? Help me out, someone. Um, Rebecca said, thank you, you're the best. You're the Thanks, best. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. And we want to know if we can call you Bex. Bex. Oh, yeah, I forgot to ask like for that. Like the beer. Can, can I, call I call you Rebs? You? Can I call you Rebs? No, Rebs are Bex. Bex is Bex. Bex is nicer. Or Becky. Can I call you Becky? Or Becca. Becky. Okay. What do you think, Rebecca? Yes. Uh, drink sugar on Charles, this one's for you. We're going to be talking about commercial properties in about a month's time. This uh, Charles Ben Simon. Talk about commercial properties. Mm. A month? Are you sure yeah. about that? Yeah. Maybe a little longer? A month and a half. Mm, <laughs> I see. Go on. Yes. What? Go on. What's wrong with you, man? Go on. Okay. Go. Oh, she's nice. lost her mind. I have lost her mind. <coughs> it's because there's all these cyclists. Why do they keep coming? Where do they Cyclers. come from? <laughs> These cyclers! <laughs> Jeez! I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to go to my parents' house. How are you going to go oh to your Oh my parents god. Home? I think there's a way to get by on the... Because where do your parents live? Like on St. Joseph. St. Joseph. Like right where the race starts. St. Joseph and Park? Yeah. That way? Yeah. yeah. Good luck. It's like literally at the start line. Good luck. You see, if we had flying cars, this wouldn't be a problem. Because no, I would just yeah. take off and land on my parents' roof. Yeah, that makes that's, sense. Uh, wow. That definitely makes sense. Yeah, it's, that's uh, why I married him. Yeah, for the uh, flying cars. Hey, it's all up here. <laughs> so I assume we're not going to get to all uh, six questions in the next uh, Let's ten try minutes. and get to the important ones. Terry, if you want to just uh, Terry, tell uh, any, Chantal uh, the important points you want to cover. Important points you want to cover? We'll do a couple like which do, like granite versus or energy efficient heating and cooling if you do that kind of stuff or that just supports the house if it No, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pre sale inspections, we can comment these renovations before this new house. The things like heated driveways, heated floors and geothermal systems with the add value. Yeah, all that stuff is good. Okay. Yeah, but so she wants to know what's the <laughs> most important, Terry. <laughs> Oh. The real estate show. Here we go, guys. Let's make some magic. With Chantal Desjardins and Terry Kalakos. The real estate show here on CJD with Terry Kalakos, who just knocked his hat off his head with his headphones because he's coordinated like that. <laughs> 
I'm a special guy. Give us a call, 514-790-0800 <laughs> or text us at 514-800. We're talking about how to increase the value of your home uh, and when you should compromise and when you should not compromise on some of the higher end stuff. Granite versus the, you know, the cheaper whatever cheap material you can put on the, what's it called, Formica? Formica. Is it really? Formica? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, or, you know, hardwoods versus floating floors, energy efficient heating. Like when when do you go big and when do you kind of go home? OK, so, a- again, I'm, all renovations. Great. You know, it's it's wonderful. But you got to think of what you're doing. Is it going to increase the value of your house, decrease the value of your house? Because certain renovations will actually decrease the value. Or That's crazy. Why? Will it actually support it again? Talk, going back to what we were talking about last week, right? If you have a thing for ceiling fans <laughs> and someone else doesn't, and let's say you like are on the cheap and you're walking down the street and you happen to see someone, you know, just threw out like this 1960s ceiling fan and, and you're, you're like, like, perfect. Yeah. And you're like this black, sorry, this gold and like, <laughs> you know, wood colored ceiling fan would look great in my kitchen. And you put it up and you're like, renovated the uh, the kitchen just by doing that chances are yeah, it ain't gonna happen no you know? so um so yeah so you just got to make sure that whatever you're you're doing is actually makes sense uh now talking about the granite countertops and all that kind of good stuff well think of it like this okay um putting in a granite countertop in a condo unit or an apartment that shouldn't necessarily have it won't actually drive the price up uh and i'll explain to you kind of what i mean right so let's say you're uh you know you're kind of like in a dicey neighborhood whatever you have like a little condo and you want to do some renovations to it because you want to increase the value of the actual condo there's a certain limit to where that condo can sell at it won't sell for more because anybody that's willing to buy something that's worth more than what you're selling it than what it's supposed mm-hmm. to sell for is not going to buy in that neighborhood right so you can put in all the fancy fixtures you can put in granite countertops you can put in a nice kitchen you can redo the floors you can do everything that you want to do but if there's a crack house next door to you right it's not going to raise the value of that place because the neighborhood will not support that value. Unless you start the trend. Unless you start the trend. Like and when I was living people. in Hochelaga, Mezonev, right, and we were chasing prostitutes out of the neighborhood. That's a different conversation. <laughs> yes, it is. We won't be going into right That'll be now. on the next hour of the real estate <laughs> yeah. show. How to clean up your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so there's, there's, again, you just have to make sure that whatever you're doing, it makes sense for, you know, so if you give you another example let's say you have a neighborhood where it's all you know kind of like townhouses or kind of like the, those little little homes you mm-hmm. know um single story little bungalows and then all of a sudden you're like you know what i like the neighborhood i don't want to move so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a second story i'm going to dig out my basement and put in a basement and i'm going to put in a pool and i'm going to do all these things and you go in and you drop hundred and fifty thousand dollars of renovations on this bungalow in a neighborhood where no one would actually buy that house in that neighborhood other than you. Right. So you're not going to recoup that money. You go and spend $150,000. That's you're it. You're not going to get it back. You're not going to get it back. But if you want to live there for a long time and you just want to no enjoy problem. it, then... You want to live there for a long time. That's a completely different story. Right. That's a different animal. You want to stay there. You want to live there. You want to enjoy the neighborhood. Great. Do it. Mm-hmm. And if by all means but don't expect somebody else to pay uh that premium uh, you know that extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you just spent on right uh what about hardwoods versus floating floors is it kind of the same thing if you're i'm i'm a hardwood kind of guy myself okay um you know there's a different school of thought you know the the engineered floors are a lot cheaper so you can as the styles change you can actually just change them with the style you know go with the style uh i prefer more going the hardwood uh, as opposed to the engineered just because you can actually sand them, varnish them, clean them up, and it, it adds value, right? Mm-hmm. There's uh, there's a reason why you're going to pay more for that. But more and more people nowadays, they're trending more towards buying the engineered stuff. The engineered stuff, you got to be careful, though, because depending on the quality, you know, you spill a bucket of water. I don't know, you're mopping or something, and you push it, you're you're done. You know, like that hardwood floor is going to basically, sorry, not hardwood, that engineered floor is going to, 
basically swell up because it, effectively it's paper, you know, I mean, right. it's not anything crazy. So it's yeah. going to swell up and you're going to have to trash it. So you got to be careful with what you're putting in. And especially if you're, you know, trying to renovate a rental unit, now it's not you, it's actually your tenants that you have to be careful of. So whatever you're putting in, you got to make sure that it makes sense for uh, the circumstances and the, what what's it So for. in that case, would you do, for, if it was for tenants and you don't want to worry about tenants spilling, you know, their Gatorade <laughs> on the floor? Um, just got to make sure that if you're going to put engineered, you want to make sure that it's a higher grade okay. engineer, that it's not going to bubble up and stuff like that. Uh, that's going to be able to withstand a lot more abuse, go more commercial as opposed to going more residential. Right. Uh, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, what about energy efficient heating and cooling? Uh, all that you know, stuff. Sprinkler, all that like. Yeah, all that good stuff. Again, uh, that's kind of, that's the kind of stuff. Those are perks, right? Those are luxuries. Those can actually increase the value of the house. You know, having a smart home that we kind of ended the show last yep. week talking about that. Having a smart home could actually raise the value of the house, especially you get in a gadget guy who's totally into it. Yep. However, you might end up getting a guy that comes in and is like, oh my God, you've set everything up with Google. I only like Alexa, whatever. So again, it's different tastes. Uh, but, you know, I I prefer having a smart home. Yep. Uh, all my stuff is intelligent at the house and I like to walk in and say, Google, turn the lights on and all the lights go on in my house, so. If there's a if there's a fireplace like a natu- a wood fireplace, well, do you look at that and go like, well, let's wood fireplaces again. Depending on where you're buying, if you're buying on the island of Montreal, they've been banned, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of places you can't even use it. So a lot of these people they actually have to convert them either to natural gas or they have to put propane in or right. electric. So these are all things that have to be kind of looked at, and you don't want someone that's, you know, kind of coming in if it's banned do something about it. Right. You know, either put in a gas one or put in a, um, a an electric one. Well, I know this has been a popular topic. How to increase the value of your home. If you missed part of the show, you can go to Terry Kalakos's Facebook page. You can watch the whole hour on Facebook Live. And Terry. We're out of real estate. We're out of real estate. Yeah. So that's it for us right now. Northeast Mortgages, give Terry a call. 514-680-4674. And... I guess have a great week. Absolutely. Eleni's going to be on next week with you, Chantel. And then we're off for then the summer. Then we're off for the summer. So I know you guys are going to miss us, but don't worry. We'll be back yeah. real soon. Just uh, go online, newsonthego.ca, and uh, sign up to our uh, YouTube channel. And that way you can see all the fun stuff that we're going to be doing over the summer. All right. Have a great week, everybody. The opinions expressed in the preceding program were... Terry, that's it. That's it. Say goodbye to the people. Bye, everyone. Again, don't forget, please go online, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, newsonthego.ca. Um, and uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Chantel. Uh, Chantel is busy on Facebook, Landa. Uh, face, I'm just on the is. Facebook. Uh, guys, it's been a pleasure getting yeah. to know each and every one of you. So you <laughs> stick around, all right? You keep your chins up and your noses down. How do you do that? Don't know how you do that, but you know how you do that. You just keep there's on keeping on. There's something on. not right with you. Keep I'll on keeping you. on. Anyways. Chicken again. Chicken we'll again. See, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>